Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Julie. I am in marketing at Beck Technology, and you are joining today's webinar about Destiny Bid Day. Super excited to share this webinar with everyone. It is going to be up to 15 minutes, so very bite size. Um, and also, our presenter today, Josh Walker, is going to um, show our brand new product to um, the audience. If you have questions, please ask them in the GoToWebinar chat feature or in the question section. Um, and we're going to try to answer as many of those today during the 15 minutes. If we don't get to your question, we will follow up with you after today's event. And also, you'll get this recording in your inbox as soon as it is available up on our YouTube channel. So I'm not going to take any time away from Josh, and I am going to give Josh presentation right so that we can get started. Thank you, Julie. Can you hear me okay? You sound great, Josh. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Look forward to showing you Bid Day today. <clears throat> this is our, our new product, Destiny Bid Day. A couple things for an introduction. It is a web-based uh, platform, so we can have as many users in Bid Day at one time as we would like. So as uh, contributors or admins are making changes, all of those updates will be seen by all of your other users in approximately a second. This is the summary page for bid day that we're currently on. We'll come back to this tab a little bit later on in our demonstration. The first column uh, that we're gonna click on and go to a scope sheet of is our bid package column. That will be a column that as you push your estimate from estimator, so you will, there will be an interaction between estimator and bid day. You have the ability to push your estimate to bid day from estimator and then pull it back once you're completed. We drop down asking which WBS property you would like to set your bid packages up by. Once we click on a package link, it's going to take us to the scope sheet, the bid package sheet. Some people call it a green sheet. The sheet where we're going to level our bids. Up in the top left hand corner, we're going to see our project name. We'll see the date that it's bidding. We'll have our project information. This information will be set up uh, as we push that bid from an estimator to bid day. The goal of, the, of having our bid day, our project name and our information is that when a user is on their bid tab, they don't have to navigate somewhere else to get any information that they would need to answer subs, answer questions from potential subs or bidders. Up in the top right hand corner, we're gonna see two symbols. The first being a padlock. That's showing that there are two users, there are two levels of permissions inside of bid day. There's a contributor who can work on assigned bid packages. Then there's an admin who will have free access to make changes throughout the bid. When the product or when the project is first created, all packages will be unlocked. So contributors can make notes to other uh, coordinating scope sheets. Once we click on that padlock, so all we did there was we clicked on that concrete material link uh, from the beginning. So I'll do a quick reintro. Sorry about that. We have our office building, our project name. That's where we got here from our summary sheet. We came through, we have our project bid date, we have our project information window. This is, this is that information that I was talking about where a user can see the information about our project coming from estimator. The padlock that I was describing where we could lock, where only assigned contributors <coughs> can work is here. And then over in the top right, we have a notes section. So we can make any notes here that we want to be seen on our summary page. So our notes that we clicked on, um, for our notes that we clicked on, um, for that ready to review. As we go down, we're gonna look at our line items. So these are gonna be coming from Estimator. So <clears throat> as we look at Estimator, um, these items we pushed, we'll get two additional layers of WBS properties. These are gonna be drop downs. Which properties do we wanna create those two uh, subfolders inside of our bid packages? Line item descriptions, quantity, units, unit price, all coming from Estimator. We want to change quantity, unit, or unit price. We can just click in our cells. If we need to make edits to the folders that they belong to or to their descriptions, we have an edit button where we can change any of that information that we need to or assign them to different classification levels inside of our bid package. If we needed to add line items to account for scope that were coming from Estimator, we have two options for that. We can add line items one at a time. 
also if there was data that we had in Excel that we needed to copy over, we could also copy and paste the line items in from Excel as well. Once we have the line items come from Estimator or brought in from the outside source the way that we want them, we'll have our bidders. So currently it's going to be a manual add on bidders. We'll have the ability to add them the same way that we add on line items. We can add them one at a time, or we can copy and paste the information in from an Excel sheet. There are plans in future iterations after the first release to uh, integrate with Construct Connect, Build and Connect, and Procord where we could bring in uh, some information from their relevant access. On each sub, we'll have a notes for them as well. So if you want to keep a call log of who we have reached out to on bid day. There's also a note, or excuse me, a document section to where once we receive bids from them, we'll have an easy place or a repository for those PDFs. So we'll go through a couple different types of bids and how we would level those. We'll say that for our example, that concrete limited is a turnkey number and reliable concrete is a little bit more of a part and piece. So we'll say that if concrete limited gave us a $400,000 number, we'll start to work our way down. We can either click from cell to cell or you can use your arrow keys. Everywhere you see a yellow and white hash, that is a line item looking to be leveled. We can either select a cost category, we'll go over all of these in just a moment, here, or if we're using our keyboard, we can just hit the I key for included. So we're gonna say that these seven items are included for Concrete Limited, since they're a true turnkey number. As we start to look at reliable concrete, what we'll do is we'll say, hey, they have building one at 200,000. We'll say the first two items are included. If they don't include a item, we can hit the M key or select M from the drop down. What we're telling the program is that's a missing scope of work. It's going to do two things for us. If another sub, in our example, for concrete broke this out, it's going to take the lowest sub number. If not, it'll take our estimated value. Both are just plug numbers. So we can override that 15,000 and type in any value that we would like to. As we work our way down, we can also manually enter sub values for individual items. So we say they have 16,000 and it's a subcategory. What our S stands for, Tower 15,000 for ore concrete came in. If they gave us a breakout that we thought was too low, that was risky compared <clears throat> to our estimated value, there's an $81,000 difference between what we thought it was worth and the value they gave us. We'd recommend that you hit the R key. We're denoting that as a risk. It's going to show up in the risk category. We're not accounting for that delta at the moment. We're going to do that here in just a second. The reason we want to do this our bids are going to live. Bid day has a historical database, just an estimator. We'll be able to see how the market is bidding certain packages and then also how individual subs are bidding those as well. So the reason that we've been coding everything, and we'll come back to trade and general requirements here in just a moment, the program's going to track which categories our bids are made up of. So for reliable, we have that 15,000 for missing, our risky 75, our 216 in total sub bids. Then if we wanted to carry something to account for that $81,000 delta, we recommend that you do that in the adjustment cell. So here's where we can make adjustments. We can also leave notes on why we made those adjustments. So that if we want to come back and review it later and be reminded on why we carried them, of course, we wanted to leave that so somebody reviewing our package could see that. They would know why we're carrying that amount. Also, we have trade and general requirements. So both are template driven. You'll have the ability to set up templates for both. We have a true false. You can click or hit the space bar. We have what we call free form text. So we're just capturing information that we need but does not affect the cost of our bid. So it could be additional mobilization costs, uh, miles from job site, things like that. The final category that we have is the ability to affect the cost of our bid. We can tell the difference between that and notes as we get a cost category drop down. Trade requirements are specific to each bid package. They're only going to show up on if their bid package exists in the estimate. General requirements have the same three functions, true, false, notes, and affect the cost of our bid, but they show up on every tab regardless of which one it is. 
So then we have worked our way down to our bid. So those are our current base bid prices. A quick reminder, broken out by our categories. Then we'll get down to our alternates. So alternates are going to be set up by a WBS property selection when we push over from estimator, which WBS property denotes our alternates. So we've already plugged in our values here. They're going to work just like our <clears throat> base bid items in the same categories. If it's turned on currently, it will have a blue check mark. If it is not, it'll just say not included. We're still tracking our values for not included, but the number that will show up on our summary sheet is base bid plus our accepted alternates. To accept a sub, we click on Concrete Limited or the name of whichever sub we'd like to select. Then we'll go back to our summary sheet. We'll come back to those columns here in just a moment. The first column will go over a selected sub. If we've selected a sub, we'll see their name here. We see their base bid, alternate one bid. We want totals is made up just like it was in our bid package. Base bid plus turn on alternates. To turn on an alternate, we just check here. If it's turned on, its math is included. If we wanted to carry a contingency, we could enter a percentage here. It would be calculated and moved over to our totals. Then the final column is bids. It's a stoplight type functionality. This will be template driven and you can set up however many bids you would like to highlight for each color. On our optional columns, we'll have who it's assigned to. So if we had questions about that, we would know who to reach out to. We'll have our cost category breakdowns for each package, along with the totals for our estimate. We'll have a comparison to second place, so we can see how much risk there is to second, and what also our spread is compared to our base estimate. And we'll have a notes column. So there are the notes that were coming from the top right on our scope sheets. Down at the bottom, our fee table will come over from estimator as well. You'll have the ability to add, delete, or modify any of your fees or their percentages inside of the day. Any changes that we make will be brought back over to estimator when we reimport our estimate. Final four buttons. There is an edit button that will allow you to edit your project information, the information that we have here. We can have project specific notes. We can export to Excel, so it will make an exact copy of what you have in bid day on the summary page and the tabs, and then export that to Excel. And we'll have the ability to close our project so that we can't uh, make edits to it. Julie, that is a overview. Are there any questions that I can answer in our last couple of minutes? We do have several questions. And again, I want to remind people, if we don't get to your questions in the next couple of minutes, we will follow up with you after today's event. Um, so the first question I have is, are the cost types user, um, cost types user, company, and project definable? So the cost categories in bid day, assuming that you're kind of talking about those summaries that we looked at here, for sub-bid missing scope, those are set by the program. They are not definable per company. Okay. Um, in lieu of totals for a particular line item, can you add unit prices? So it's currently just totals in. When we are on a bid package page, it is just totals currently in these columns. There isn't the ability to multiply by quantity off of a unit price. And I do want to remind people, bid day is a standalone product from Destiny Estimator, or you can use it with um, another solution. And that's why we have that Excel export option. Um, next one is, can you move the trade requirements above cost information in the bid packages? I believe this location is set. I will confirm that one for you, and I'll follow up on that one afterwards. Okay, thank you. Um, just a few seconds left, and I feel like we're racing against the wire. Uh, I do appreciate all the questions coming in. How many users can edit at the same time? You can have as many bidders assigned to one tab as you would like. So you can have as many users editing the estimate as you would like. All right. Well, that is the end of our 15 minutes. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, Josh, for showing us Destiny Bid Day. And we look forward to seeing everyone on our next webinar event. Thanks.